live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We appreciate it. Of course, we are live streaming here every weekday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific. We're on YouTube, Facebook, our website, and our app, so lots of places to find the show. Today, though, we have some very special guests, and it's for a pretty good reason. There is a performance called The Music Critic, which is making its North American debut here in Portland, Oregon. And this performance is probably not like anything else that you've seen. It involves the Oregon Symphony, it involves a conductor, Alexei Igudisman, and it involves actor John Malkovich. The premise behind this is that they play some all-time classic greats. We're talking about Beethoven and his compatriots there during that time. But the catch is John Malkovich performs a role as a critic reciting actual critiques that they received back in the day. Somebody actually wrote a bad review of Beethoven. John Malkovich plays that person and does that live on stage. It's a very interesting performance, the way it all comes together. I got to speak to both of these gentlemen about that and about how it all started, and uh, it was pretty great to sit down with the two of them. So here we go. It's John Malkovich and Alexei Igudisman. It is with a strange passion that Dvorak now indulges in ugly, unnatural, and ghastly stories. Poor Debussy, sandwiched in between Beethoven and Brahms, seemed even weaker than usual. John and Alexi, thank you very much, you know, for being here with, with us today. And, uh, you know, to start off, I think just understanding and getting an idea of how this concept got started, how this how this originally came together. I know I'm sure it's a big elaborate story, but just a, a basic understanding. Could you tell us how this all began? Um, Alexei, do you want me? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say a couple of words and pass it over to you, John. <laughs> Basically, we, we, we met quite a few years ago in a, in a, in basically through a common friend, uh, Julian Racklin, another wonderful violinist, uh, who had a festival in Dubrovnik in Croatia. And uh, we, we started to collaborate on, on, a, on a piece that I proposed uh, called The Music Critic, basically. It was an idea that I had about putting some of the most horrific reviews um, ever written, well, not just a, a, some, some are nicer, some are more horrible, most of them are horrible, I think, <laughs> uh, and and putting them together with some of the greatest pieces of music that there are, and and I think John got quite excited, quite interested in the in the project, uh, because he he also discovered how what an incredible impact music or classical music has um, on one's life. Actually, one of my favorite quotes by by, by uh, John is, uh, you know, when you experience great classical music, it's it's like being it's like being run over or hit by a moving house, not even a truck. It's like a moving house, right? That's what you like to say, which is very nice, seemingly. Um, uh, yes, Alexei and I had worked on a piece at Julian Rockman's festival in Dubrovnik the previous year or two years before, I don't remember which. And then I was in Vienna doing a, a, another piece with uh, in classical music with, with my colleagues there. And and Alexei, uh, we, we met in Vienna and he proposed the idea. I, I just thought it was a fantastic idea, which was, as he said, essentially the worst reviews imaginable about the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. And I love the idea for a catholicity of reasons. Um, the, the, the main one, I think, being that I think a lot of supposed or so-called or self-anointed creative types think that when you put an artistic idea out into the public square, then it's all kind of adulation and tropical drinks on the veranda. And this kind of shows, no, that it doesn't really work that way. Uh, always as much as one might think they would like it to um 
And, and that's the music critic. The one we're doing in Portland will be the first time it's ever done in America because although last fall we, we uh, toured, we did a, a short American tour uh, of the chamber music version. This is the version with the full symphony and it will only be our third uh, performance of that and the first one ever in America. So that's different music, obviously, to the chamber music version and different critics as well. Um, that's in incredible that it's going to be here too. And I've got a couple of questions about this. One, just going back to talking about the critics, you know, and this is something that I think nowadays, you know, obviously with social media, you put something out there, there's a billion critics, you know, that could be showing up. But I think this is fascinating just seeing that that critics, you know, go back way back to then to when this music was created. And it's still people that just want to put their stamp on something and trying to maybe tear something down or not understanding. And I think that's fascinating just from a historical study of learning what these people said even back then. And, you know, to that extent, how much work was it finding these actual critical pieces of of all of this artwork? It was quite a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun work. I have to yeah. say because it's 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 you know it's so sardonic to read how horrible Beethoven is. I mean Beethoven, one of the great. I mean Brahms, Schumann, some of the most beautiful, gorgeous music. So so in a work, yes, it was work, and it's actually an ongoing work. John and I often uh, exchange when we come across something new. We exchange uh, uh, different ideas about it. Also. So now we're, we're going to be looking for, for some horrible uh, reviews about the Oregon Symphony, a, a wonderful, wonderful orchestra, which I'm sure has had its fair share of horrible reviews. And in a way, I mean, you know, why are we doing it? I think one of the main reasons is also to show that, that you know, everybody is going to be criticized at some point. And it's really up to you how you take the criticism, because... You know, for one person, something that is beautiful for another person, it's 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 horrific. And very often in these critics, you can actually hear very much what the what the critics are saying, what, why they are criticizing it. But, but it, it, and it's often has a lot of sense. It's just for one person, that's the horrible part. For us, that's the beautiful part. Right. It just goes it goes both ways, and it just depends on who that is. Um, talking about the Oregon Symphony, you know, and coming here to Portland for this, you, you mentioned, you know, this is the first performance of this in North America. What is it that made you choose Portland out of all the possible places you could have gone? The food. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the food. <laughs> Uh, no, no. I mean, I, it is a wonderful. I, look, to be to be honest, they they were the first to show interest in the in, in the show, and and we also have personal connections to Portland, right, John? I mean, uh, it's a special place. Both of my children went to university in Portland, so and my son still lives there, and uh, it's a town I've I've been to many times, a city I've been to, so I know it fairly well, and uh, uh, was will be happy to be out there again. Um, I I do a lot of tours and unfortunately the night before I'm in Versailles uh, but uh, uh, and Portland's quite a, quite a ways from there but uh, um, I'm always happy to go back that is a yeah, long it's a, track. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a yeah, it's a beautiful town, though Portland. I I, I mean, I'm not sure whether how it compares to Versailles, but uh, you know, <laughs> apples and oranges, I would say apples yeah, and right. oranges. Uh, Versailles is uh, the, the town isn't so beautiful. Of course, the the palace and the grounds are are amazing. So, are you saying uh, Portland is more charming than Versailles? Probably, right? Uh, you know, I don't know how it is now. Portland's been through some rough times uh, in yeah. the last few years, but uh, it certainly was very charming when when my kids were in the school there and stuff. Yeah, um, it, it's gone through some rough stuff. It's definitely, uh, I would say, on the improvement side. Um, things are things are well. Still I, so I, much. 
Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, in Portland, I performed there several times, and I have to say, I, and I'm not just saying it because because we're with you and we're coming to you. It's one of the best audiences. I would even say it has been my favorite audience in the U.S. in Portland. Incredibly intelligent, incredibly open, uh, uh, very knowledgeable, but but ready for fun, ready to enjoy what what they're hearing. So, I, I'm really looking forward to this one that's great i've never played there um oh you'll you'll love it john you'll you'll love it sure yeah i just had i toured so much more in europe so i'm much better with german audiences than <laughs> oh well well portland will beat german audiences out of the park any day <laughs> we're the berlin of oregon so you know yes. I mean, works, no. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well for for these audiences that are going to get to see this you know most likely for the first time unless they saw it in europe or the you know the brief the, the chamber version you know what can an audience member expect to take away from coming to see this show uh, i think they can take away an appreciation of some really beautiful symphonic music, um, really lovely stuff. And I think hopefully they'll take away quite a few laughs um, because there's some pretty funny stuff in it. But they'll also take away something serious, which is that when you when you create something, you have to understand that uh, even the very best things, and you could even arguably, <laughs> intelligibly say uh, the very best things might be not well accepted at the time they're first heard or seen or shown or or experienced um and i think that's a great lesson that the the judge of something that's an important work of art is is i i would say as follows speaking from my personal experience some, some years ago the Rijksmuseum in in amsterdam asked me to do a narration for them about um uh, rembrandt's favorite printmaker um and uh, it, it was a pretty fascinating topic, and they were doing an ex uh, exhibition, exposition of his work. He was called Seger, S like like Seger, S E E G E R, and uh, some of it looked so unbelievably modern. It was it was sort of shocking. He had a very interesting life. So this was a, a narration about him of I don't know thirty minutes or something. <laughs> And the Rijks Museum said, you know, we can't pay you. Um, so, so, but what we can do is the net, we know you love the night watch or Rembrandt's painting the night watch. So the next time you're in town, you come when the museum is closed, you let us know. Uh, you come, we take you into the room with the night watch. If you want to bring some friends, go ahead. And we'll bring some wine and you stay there and uh, look at the night watch uh, as long as you want. And that's certainly the best payday I've ever had. And, um, you know, it had several other massive epic murals in the room that were nothing in comparison all of them quite fantastic in their own ways but that's um that remains several hundred years later uh, a shocking work of art that just jumps off jumps off the canvas into the room and just smacks you. Uh, and that's what the best art can do. And music does it pretty much better than the others. Um, because 
it, it goes straight to the bone. So that's, that's another thing I think people can take away. Uh, well, and, and of course, not to forget, they can also take away how, how um, a wonderful actor can uh, uh, miserably fail at conducting, I think. Um, that, that may be the case, because um, at one point during, during the Bolero, the famous Ravel Bolero, uh, John claims that any monkey can do the job of a conductor uh, after telling about... 10 or so horrific conducting jokes while I, I try to conduct the Ravel Bolero, and then he claims that any monkey can do my job, and then he proves that uh, he's right. Well, he did do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's a very special moment when you see John Malkovich conducting the, the, the orchestra. So. Of course, I don't concur with that assessment of my conducting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, actually, one of the most special moments also that the, the, the audience will experience, uh, I was very happy when when we first developed the project, I wanted to include some some reviews about stuff that we did. So I found some horrible reviews about me from the internet, which John uh, recites beautifully. And, um, and then also I found a hor horrific review about John Malkovich, about something he did in Turkey. And I, I took the liberty to set that to music. Um, and it kind of became like a little symphony called the Malkovich Torment, which in a way is kind of like one of the highlights of the evening, wouldn't you say? It's beautiful. I love it. It's my favorite. I got it. The name alone. Is... My father could have lived long enough to hear that review. <laughs> completely justified. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love it that you have to you have to embrace that stuff, and I think that's it's you know, it's, yeah. It's, that review is so hilarious. It's so well written. It's so relentless. It's and when I the first time I read it, Alexei sent it to me, um, and the it, the translated version and. I just rolled off the little kind of little banquet I was sitting on. I was laughing so hard. It was just so great. I didn't want it to end. And it almost does it end. I mean, <laughs> had my page now. Yeah, we, we had to cut it down substantially, yeah. and it's still uh, pretty yeah. long. <laughs> Someday we'll have to do that as a standalone symphonic piece. A whole evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that person on. has that much passion about disliking whatever it is that you do. I know. It's, see, I, I can't help it. I love that. I mean, just it's just so good. Amazing. Well, you know, I know... I, I just want to say I appreciate your time here talking to us about this and, and being here for both of you guys, Alexei and John. And I'm so looking forward to this performance, to sure. seeing this, to seeing this in person. Um, I guess, you, you know, just is there anything else that you'd like to share just to the to the people of Portland and Oregon and, and the people that are going to get to come out and see this and, and get to be there and experience this night with you? For me, I just hope they have a good time, and uh, I hope they have a higher opinion of the music than, than <laughs> the critics do. Certainly, Alexei and I have a higher opinion of it, or it wouldn't be in the piece. But uh, mostly, I hope they have a good time, and and uh, I hope that on on a very simple um, human level that people reflect a little bit on the meaning of a creative life um, for those who watch it or listen to it and for those who do it as well. I, I think maybe that's right, John. I think maybe that people think about how hurtful uh, some things can be and can come across to somebody who puts so much effort in. And on the flip side of it, how unimportant in the long run a negative review of anything that you do is because in the end it's only the quality that counts and it's the quality that endures the test of time 
Mm -hmm. Fantastically put. Yeah. 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 Beethoven, uh, his work worked out all right. So I think he's fine. He's doing fine. (laughs) Even even though some of the uh, the negative reviews are even of recent times. That's wow. that's the crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> we want Beethoven. <laughs> well, because he's because he apparently it's 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 music for for privilege, privileged white uh, white men. That's that, white you know. That, yeah, that's that's the problem with Beethoven. That's so that's why why we shouldn't listen to it anymore. But I don't know. Maybe there's something in it for for other other minorities too. Let, let's see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll yeah. find out. Well, thank yeah. you guys so much for Thanks a lot. Your time and talking. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, Alexa, I'll come up with some better food recommendations for you too. You know, we've got. I gave you one, but there's there's plenty out there. Here in town. Perfect. Thanks a lot. <laughs> right, Have a great you day. See Thanks. You All right. Huge thank you to John Malkovich. And Alexei Igudisman, you never know who is going to be here on Fox 12 now, and that's part of the great thing about this show is we cover such a wide range of topics and segments here, so I appreciate you tuning in. You can go check out the Music Critic and the Oregon Symphony at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall on June 12th. So that is when they're going to be here in town. And again, the North American debut of that. That's pretty great and uh, interesting to hear their thoughts on Portland as well. And we'd like to hear your thoughts. You can always send me an email, fox12now at kptv.com. That's fox12now at kptv.com. And again, we are live streaming here every weekday. We have lots of segments for you to check out. I suggest downloading the Fox 12 Oregon app. That is a fantastic way to see all the different things that we cover here um, with our wide range of topics. But uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.